Hello and welcome to Crochet My Way. We're going to talk about the magic circle, also known as the magic ring this time. Now I have two little samples on the bench here, this one and this one. One has been made with the magic circle and one has been made with a chain four joined with a slip stitch. So can you tell which is which? It's not a guessing game so I'll tell you. So this one was made with the magic circle and this was made with a chain four. So what's the difference and who cares? Obviously this one has a slightly bigger opening in the center, the one that was made with the chain four, and this one has a very closed center. Now sometimes we need that in a pattern that we're making and the designer may specifically ask you to start with a magic circle. You don't have to of course, but if you're doing things like a migurumi, big holes in the head will not look good. So you have to probably find some time to make yourself practice and learn how to make the magic circle in those cases. So that is made with a chain four, that is made with the magic circle or magic ring. I'm going to show you how to make the magic ring. Okay so grab some yarn, anything, just some scrap if you want and a hook any size, it doesn't really matter, we're not, we're just practicing here. Leave yourself a substantial tail, pick up your yarn the way you normally would hold it, see this is how I hold my yarn, I always have and I always will, like this. And then wrap the yarn loosely around your hand twice. So there's a second wrap on my thumb, on my index finger here. Now what I do is I take my hook and I go under the first loop and I just pull the second loop through it. Then I make a chain. This is how I do it. Now I do that chain, it doesn't really do anything, it doesn't add height, it just holds the loops together for me. Alright, let's do that again. Grab a nice long tail, pick up your yarn and wrap, make sure you've got two wraps on your finger. Under, pull through and a chain. And that's the setup for me for the ring. Nothing else has happened here, I haven't started the pattern at all. Then what I need to do is take that loop off my finger. Now the important thing about the magic ring is what happens to this tail. That tail needs to stay up above and we're going to be working below it. So when you're working your first round of stitches there should only be one loop on the bottom and the other loops above. Okay. Now if I have a pattern that starts with single crochet I will make one more chain. If my pattern starts with half double crochet or double crochet I will have two chains. One, two. And if I had a treble I'd make a third one. Okay. That's my starting stitch. Now for example if I may need to make these little rings that I made earlier I need the starting chain plus 12, uh, 11 more double crochet for a total of 12. So I'm now going to make my double crochet making sure that my tail loop, this one stays up and I go over it like that and then I make my double crochet. See that? And then you continue on around and it doesn't matter if your loop spreads out, we don't care because we're going to tighten it up as long as it doesn't unravel. That's why I told you to leave a longish tail so that even if your loop here gets full of stitches and starts to pull open, it won't pull out. So leave yourself plenty of room. And if you're worried, you can always just give it a little tug. This is why it's called a magic ring. You can see that already. Now I'm going to finish my stitches, I need to put 11 more double crochet plus my chain 2 in here. So I'll just go do those and I'll come back and I'll show you why it's called magic. Back in a second. Okay, so here I've finished all my double crochet. So I have 12 of them, let me count them. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11 plus my chain 2. That's the top of my chain two, chain one, chain two. This little loop down below was that very first loop that I pulled through as a chain to hold my loops together. So now it's very open and looks unpleasant, doesn't it? Well, we're going to fix that. So you can now, what you do, you take this loop and you give it a gentle tug. Now I'm just going to put my hook down so I can show you this because there's two steps to this draw when you draw the th loop through. So it's, you, should, you shouldn't have to fight it, you should just very gently pull through 
Now you think that's closed, don't you? But it really isn't yet. So you pull until you've met the resistance and then grab it. Now don't yank too hard, please. And give it a final little tug. Did you hear that? That has now completely snugly pulled that loop closed. Now, many people become unstuck with the magic ring because after they've made it, or the magic circle, they don't remember to square this tail away very, very, very well. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So first, I just need to join with a slip stitch to my first to the top of my chain two to complete my little circle here. I'm going to cut that loop off and I'm going to show you how I secure away my tails. Okay, so many, many, many times we see heartbreaking photos on online of people showing how the centers of their giant blankets have come unraveled because they started with a magic circle. So this is what I do. Once I've completed my work and I've got my two tails, this is the circle tail. This is the one that I snag, snugged in to make to close the hole. And this was my finishing tail from when I finished my round. I always, always, always take a minute to make a square knot. Now if your loops, this is hanging up too high, get your needle and just thread it down closer, but don't come out in the same place. Make sure they're in different locations. And then make a square knot. Thank you to one of my wonderful viewers who told me what this knot was called. I've been making it my whole life, didn't know what it was called. It's called a square knot. Now, what you do is, you take your two ends, and you start. First one goes over and under, and you make the first part of the knot. Now you just go down nice and snug. Don't yank it, just till it's closed in on the top. Don't yank it. Then you come back. Now the other side goes over and under. So the first time I went this way, this time I'm going this way, over and under. It looks almost identical, but it isn't. Now this knot is going to cinch down on top of the first one. And I'm going to pull it quite tight. And it is not pulling my threads at all, because it has knotted itself down on top of the first knot, like this. And so... You're never ever going to accidentally pull your work and have it collapse. All right, that's called a square knot, and that's what I do every time I use a magic circle. Uh, if you're wondering what's going on over here, I have little magnets on all of my scissors to hold my my darning needles, because so I don't lose them. And then all you have to do is continue to work away. Get your thread your, your ends. Work them away around in the circle backwards and forwards and that magic circle is never going to come unraveled. Not ever, ever, ever. Okay, and that's all it is guys. Practice a few times. Grab some scrap bit of yarn that you don't care about. Make 10 of these if you have to and just keep doing it. Practice with the square knot. Look it up on another YouTube channel if you need to till you get it right. And then you will see that this is not going anywhere because it's knotted and that knot is very secure all right now i have seen people talk about just you know thread your tail away go back double back go two or three times but when these blankets and things get washed and washed and used and pulled and tugged and folded and washed and dried things work loose so i'm a little bit neurotic about it i make a square knot and that's it guys for a magic circle go have some fun and uh, play around till you get comf comfortable and confident. Till next time, bye for now.